Hi, everybody, and welcome to A Different Perspective. My name is Dr. Jason Nobles um, from the Wellness Way in Green Bay, and we got a fun show for you today, so let's get going. So let's get going today. I get a fun topic to talk about. Um, it was originally pitched to me as Santa's Big Fat Butt by Erin, who's usually over at our table. She's not here today, so I had to mention it since she's not going to be here. And what we're going to focus on is holidays and weight gain because we are in the midst of that season. So the questions always come in. Holidays are here again. I don't want to gain weight. What can we do? Right, because there's a couple of things that we have to worry about when it comes to the holidays, and sugar and stress are the two main drivers of most illnesses today. Right, so we just do not want to get into a spot to where we're putting ourselves into a spot where we make ourselves sick. Right, so we're going to go through a bunch of different things today about how to stay healthy and not put on weight during this time of year. But first, let me introduce you to our table team. And they're going to be talking about things that they're doing in ways that you can kind of get in and win some prizes. Hey guys, good morning. Good to be back here with you guys today. Today we have Dr. Destiny on the desk and Dr. Monica as well. It's fun to be interacting with you guys. Today I'll be on Instagram interacting with you guys. Where are you gonna be Dr. Monica? Good morning everyone. I will be on Facebook interacting with you. And today, this week's uh, giveaway that we're doing is ashwagandha, ashwagandha capsules. So make sure you are interacting with us on all of those apps. Awesome. And today I will be on ADP website. So looking forward to talking with you guys there. But before we give it back to Dr. Jason, we do have a Academy winner. So this week's winner has a passion for health and wellness since she was 18. She loves sharing nutritional advice and providing clean nutrients-dense foods to her and her family. Congratulations, Paula Bagstad. Congrats, Paula. And back to you, Dr. Jason. Well, what's the boy's name over there? He didn't introduce himself. Oh, I'm Dr. Zach. <laughs> okay, that's Dr. Zach. All right, so here's the fun stuff. They've actually checked to see, they've done studies to kind of see how much weight do people actually gain? So this comes directly from PubMed and in a little excerpt here, most studies show the average American gains eight pounds during the period from Thanksgiving to New Year's. All the reports were retrieved suggested that at least five pounds are gained from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day. All right, so that's the average. Obviously, there's people who are less and there's people who are more, but why does it happen during this time? Well, look what you're going through, right? You have all these wonderful office parties to go through. Sometimes you have to go to multiple office parties because you have a spouse. Uh, there's also all those wonderful trays full of cookies and sweets and snacks and nobody, nobody walks past once and grabs one cookie once. You walk by 17 times, you get about 17 cookies, right? Um, then the family get togethers. <laughs> now, one of my all time favorite Christmas movies is Four Christmases because none of us go to one Christmas party anymore. I mean one family get together because we have family here we have family there their parents are separated their parents are separated so you go to his house and her house and his house and her house and that doesn't add any stress whatsoever <laughs> right and then obviously all the wonderful 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 food and all the wonderful cookies right so the big thing to do is i said you versus you on each one of these slides because that's literally what you're up against you're up against you, your ability to say no or skip out of a conversation you don't want to have or anything like that that's going to happen at any of those Christmas parties. So regardless of the situation, like I say, the choice is yours. It's up to you. But from a practitioner standpoint, I also know that people are never going to be perfect, right? Because 
you're going to not be in control of the food you're eating all the time at those things, right? So if you can control the ingredients, awesome. It's a lot easier to stay healthy, but there are going to be times when you are not in control of those ingredients. There's going to be times when, yeah, you overindulge on the cookies. And there's going to be times when you just don't want to be where you're at and it's creating a ton of emotional stress. And then when you're under a ton of emotional stress, you also don't sleep very well, which leads us to inability to heal and repair. And now we're getting sick in the most happy time of the year. Isn't that fun? So because I know, and this is what I tell people, I was like, you may not need all this stuff. But in times of bad choices, let's call them, I'll always put these notes on people's supplement sheets. Because when we send them home with a list of supplements that their body needs based on the testing in the labs, I always put this not on their sheet, but in the notes at the bottom. So these are things that we're going to be going over today. And these are things that can help, like I said, Albizia, when you do not control the ingredients. Gymnema for the extra cookie stress and California poppy for extra family stress. Maybe it's not your family, maybe it's your in-laws, whoever it is, right? But I wanna go over why I recommend these things and why you can get these things right on our website And because you may know like, oh, I'm gonna to have to go through this. I might need some of that, okay? And I'll even give you some tips and tricks and when and how to take it. Now, Albizia is probably one of the most common herbs given because what it does is if you just read the normal support the normal immune response it decreases the histamine response from allergies so this is how it does that it actually binds to the histamine receptor from the mast cell so that it does not produce excessive amounts of histamines now histamines allergies right most people when it comes to allergies think of something like benadryl benadryl is an antihistamine well among all the things that Albizia does, one of the most common that's going to be used for is that antihistamine response for when you do not control the food, right? Ooh, neuroprotective effects of Albizia uh, against glutamate-induced endoplasmic reticulum stress and apoptosis in human microglial cells. This is a big one because one of the most common additives to food which most people say it's a sugar or it's a sweetener or it helps food taste better is glutamate or more specifically MSG, monosodium glutamate, right? So what glutamate actually is, is it is a brain hormone. It is the most excitatory neurotransmitter that your body can actually make. And if it's in a whole bunch of the food, it can cause neurological damage. Look at the first sentence right here. Uh, and plasmic reticulum stress caused by excess of glutamate in the central nervous system leads to neurodegeneration. Albizia has been reported to possess neuroprotective activities. And what it actually does is it protects you from specifically that hyper excitement you're going to get from the monosodium glutamate, right? And it said right in there can be very damaging to the nervous system, which causes more stress, which causes more issues. Uh, anti-allergic activities, right? There's tons of research on Albizia as far as anti-allergic activities. Uh, results support the conclusion that Albizia lebic at different concentrations has got potent mast cell stabilizing property. Mast cells, their job is to produce the histamines when they're triggered, when they're called into duty. They're not always making a ton of histamines, but when they're triggered, boom, you're gonna get that big outcry. Imagine if you're allergic to pollen, or dust and you walk into a field of stuff that you're allergic to, you're not sneezing when you're away from those things. You're sneezing while you're being exposed. So in this case, Albizia is one of those things that I'll use to help people get calmed down while they figure out their food allergies. Because once you test and you learn what your actual allergies are, sometimes some of them slip through while you're trying to be really good about it. Right, like you might forget that there's egg in something that you're eating because you're not actually eating a physical egg, right? If you're allergic to eggs. So while it's very important to calm that stuff down, the better people do at kicking those things out, then they don't need it. So it's one of those things to where I love giving it to people while they transition. And then I refer to it as a medicine cabinet herb. And what I mean by that is 
Let's say all of a sudden you're doing really good on your food allergies. You don't need it anymore. You put it on the shelf. Then you decide to go out to eat and you go to your favorite restaurant and you're like, oh, there's going to be some ingredients that I know I'm allergic to in that food, but I really want to go to that restaurant, right? Albizia is one of those things I tell people, take it with you in the car, take a swig of it, go into the restaurant, come out, take another quick swig of it. It's not going to be like 100% putting you in a bubble shield, but it's also going to help you not feel like you got run over by a Mack truck, right? You'll feel like you got run over by a toy truck. So you're still not going to feel great, but you're also not going to feel like absolute garbage and maybe have to run to the bathroom and have diarrhea and vomit and all that stuff up just because you enjoyed your meal. Okay. All right. Development and cosmetic evaluation of topical albizia. This is a fun one too, because it has antioxidant support, right? Oxidation is stress. You've probably had oxidation molecules like hemoglobin A1C tested in your body before. But also, when we eat all the holiday food and the sugar increases and all that fun stuff, your skin ages faster. So albizia can also be used basically not as makeup, but to help kind of help the damage and protect your body from the extra damage in different ways, right? Antioxidant activity of albizia lebic bark was 84%. Uh, both emulgose base and test formulation were stable at all storage conditions. Conclusion, it can be concluded that a stable topical gel containing 3% albizia bark has significant anti -effects, antioxidant effects on human skin, right? Gotta love the crow's feet and all that other fun stuff that we have to deal with with all that stress that we get as we age and all the other fun things from all the bad habits and all the toxic stuff that's in the environment and all the... Ugh, Maybe it's just from all the smiling we do, right? So what I want to do next is kind of shift gears. So Albizia, like I said, it's one of my favorites um, uh, to help people kind of adapt, especially when they don't know what their food allergies are or they're just getting into the process of figuring those things out. But then take as needed and keep on hand during the holidays. One of my favorite favorite all-time herbs is gymnema. Now, gymnema I already mentioned in that previous slide where I put it on there, but kind of the same thing. It, it can be great in multitude of fashions, right? So what it does is they did a comprehensive review of the chemicals in it, and here's the results. It renders blood sugar lowering activity due to the presence of the chemicals in it, such as germerin, which is called uh, the sugar destroyer in Hindi, uh, gymnemic acids, as well as gymnema saponins. They name all the particles after the actual herb. Uh, it's also known to have antioxidant, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, gastro and hepatal, hepatal protective, anti-cancer and lipid lowering activities. <gasps> okay, that was a lot. So here's one of the coolest things that it does. It binds to the sweet receptors on the tongue. Okay, so you have to know that you have sweet receptors on your tongue, right? You have sweet, salt, bitter, all those wonderful things you can taste. So sweet is typically on the tip. First thing that all these wonderful cookies and all these things um, come in contact with, the tip of the tongue. So what it does is it binds to the receptor that signals the body to produce insulin, the sweet receptor. So that's why you can take sugar out of things that keep them really sweet, like diet sodas and stuff like that, that are still really sweet, the sweetness hits the tongue. Even though you're not increasing the blood sugar, you're still going to increase insulin. So that's how we start to develop insulin resistance, even if we're not eating sugar. Okay. So when it does that, when it binds to that sweet receptor and you eat something right after it, you taste nothing. Tastes like you're eating cardboard junky cardboard. So we did this on stage years ago to where we had people come up and do it because they're like, that doesn't work that way. We're like, all right, let's try it. So we just had them put a little eighth of a teaspoon in their mouth and keep it on their tongue for a couple seconds. And then they had their favorite soda with them. Um, I believe we gave them Pepsi and they took a drink and tasted absolutely nothing. So when it comes to all those beautiful desserts that we're going to eat, especially when we're stressed, right? Because stress backwards spells desserts. Um, that's why gymnema can be so important. It helps with decreasing 
the blood sugar by helping the insulin sensitivity and helping sugar and insulin talk to each other to get them out of the blood. But also neurologically, let's say you're having troubles getting over an addiction to cookies or whatever sweet it is, right? Snickers bars, candy bars, whatever it is. Here's how you kind of trick yourself into doing that. You do that little experiment. You take a little of the gymnema, you put it on your tongue, and then you eat your favorite horrible, nasty tasting thing that you really, really love. And it tastes like crap. So the next time you get a hankering for it, you look at it and you're like, that tasted like crap last time. And it's easier to start even breaking those bad sugar habits just from creating that neurofeedback loop, which is kind of cool, right? <clears throat> So when it comes to sugar, sugar gets in a couple different ways, right? Sugar increases a couple different ways. One, we eat it. And two, we get stressed and our body makes a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol's job is to help your body adapt to stress. How does it do that? It increases your blood sugar to give you energy to get away from the tiger or the bear that's chasing you. Now, more often than not, we don't get chased by bears and tigers, but we also have the mental stress, right? And when we are under constant mental stress, it's like we invite the bear and tiger into our house and they sleep next to us and they're there all the time and we can't get rid of them. So then we overproduce cortisol for long periods of time and then our body can't adapt. So this young lady that I did this test on, excuse me, this is called a Dutch test. A lot of you may have heard of it. It's a urine test. It measures metabolites as they come out in the urine. And when you look at that left, that little mountain range, the patient values is that red line. That's where she was. Okay. Inside the black range is where she should be. So when you look to the right, that little dial that says her cortisol is 606 and it shouldn't be over 230. That's a woman under a ton of stress. Now her stress was really simple. Uh, she hated her job. She really hated this one specific guy. If you're out there, you know who you are, Joshua. But she really did not like him at all. And it stressed her out beyond belief because all day, every day she was at work and it was making her sick because this guy was a tool, right? So what we did was, well, I shouldn't say we, was we started working with getting the inflammation down and everything. But if you're still under that constant stress, it's gonna be a heck of a lot harder to make progress because you're constantly causing inflammation while you're trying to put out inflammation. It's one of my favorite sayings and the kids over here have heard me say it a million times. It's like pissing into the wind, right? Nobody likes it and you're gonna get wet, but you don't want to be in the situation where you're, you can't out supplement stuff like that. So what she did was this, she quit her job. She got away from the stressor and we retested her. And these were her labs after. See the change? How much change, how much difference there was between here to here? Isn't that crazy? And all she did was stop going somewhere. There's plenty of jobs out there. We always hear that. We've, we've asked this question a bunch, whereas can people quit their job and go get a new one? Yeah, but people always say, I can't quit my job, I need my job. Okay, then here, take all this stuff that you don't need because you're in place in the job you don't really need anyway. So. Quit your job, get another job. Well, get another job lined up, quit your job, and stop stressing out so much. I know it's easier said than done, I know, but I'm gonna say it because if I don't tell you to do it, maybe the thought never crosses your mind that that might be the reason you have all these health issues, right? So, holiday food. Holiday food is basically the food pyramid, right? All the cookies, all the sweets, all the breads, all the pastas. Uh, very little fruits and vegetables. Sometimes there's a fruit and veggie tray. Sometimes there's a meat and cheese tray, whatever it is. But more often than not, this is what we're going to be eating. Now, this is the cause of most of the health and heart disease and cancers and everything else that's going on in this country. Because when you look at the research behind it, this is the research and how they came up with a food pyramid. Because they were trying to prove that cholesterol was bad and caused heart disease and that sugar was good. So back then what they did was they tested the fats and the oils on waffles, muffins, cakes, cookies, pie crust, biscuits, salad dressings, and bread spread. So they put all the fats 
on sugar and had sugar carried into your system. And then they're blaming the fat and ignoring the fact that they just gave them a whole bunch of sugar. And that's what led to the development of the food pyramid, which started back in the late seventies, early eighties, which is when all the chronic health diseases slowly started to get worse after that, right? All the Alzheimer's, all the dementias, all the diabetes, all the heart disease, all, all of it started shortly after that. I'm not saying it didn't exist before that, but the amount of escalation, you can look at all the charts, the amount of escalation we got after that came about, everything just boom. All those diseases I just mentioned, okay? And so for the next month or so, we're gonna be willingly doing that to ourselves. And then that's the point of today. Let's come at it from a different perspective, shall we? Now, what is stress? I'm sure you've seen this before, right? But stress is a physical or psychological stimulus that can produce mental or physiological reactions that may lead to illness. This comes from a medical dictionary. We didn't make this up. So it's a disruption of balance in the body, which may be triggered by alarming experiences, either real or imaginary, right? This is kind of the, the big difference between men and women. So most of the stuff we stress out about it is one of those things to where we stress out about it for a little bit and then we deal with it and then we're over it. Most of the stuff, ladies, you stress about never even happens. It's all between here. It's worry, right? Worry is one of those main things that's going to make us sick. We always constantly worry about stuff we cannot control, right? So practice it. Work on controlling what you can control. Control the controllables, right? And your stress levels can go away. I always tell, I used to try to get my women, especially the stressed out women, I would tell them, think like a man. Because men, we really don't care all that much. And once I had the happiest lady across from me, she's like, I did it. I started thinking like a dude and oh, I'm sleeping better, less stress, happier. It's like, excellent. At least I can tell somebody once, at least I change a woman's mind. Sorry. Um, it's the little things in life that make us happy. Speaking of the little things in life that make us happy, how about this little bottle of California poppy? Now, California poppy is just one of those things that we have at the office that's open all the time just in case, you know, people come along, stress us out, or there's just a whole lot of stuff going on. But what can it do? Calm occasional feelings of anxiety and encourage relaxation, sport, healthy sleep, right? That's why it's one of the most important because if we can't get out of that stress response, this can help us calm that down, right? So in the research, uh, behavioral effects of Escholzia californica, which is California poppy, sedative and anti-anxiolytic properties. So it's calming for the adrenals. It's calming for the stress response. It cannot take the stress away. What it can do is calm the response to the stress down, right? So it's one of those things, same thing with the medicine cabinet herb. If your mother-in-law is not around, maybe you don't need to drink it. But if she starts coming over or starts saying, hey, I'm coming over at this time, uh, that's where you start feeling all those feelings start to come up. And that's where you can kind of take a swig of it and it'll help calm down the response to the stress, right? Um, also, uh, sedative effect, it's also been studied with sleep. It's one of the most important that we have for sleep. Now, hopefully a lot of you may have done a little bit of this during last month's sleep challenge. And hopefully, where's that this one? That was last month. Yeah, okay. Um, but GABA is the most calming brain hormone that we have. It's very important to have GABA-sensitive hormones in the body so that you can fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, right? So GABA allosteric modulators acting as benzodiazepine site include alkaloids isolated from California poppy which is used to induce relax, relaxation and sleep. And we all know with the stress of the holidays, it's harder to fall asleep. It's harder to stay asleep. We toss, we turn, we don't get good quality sleep. But with Escholzia californicum, um, it's six vowels and six consonants in a row. It's not the easiest thing to say, which is why they just call it poppy. Um, but it improves sleep latency and duration, which means it's going to help you fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer, right? 
helps with serotonin, helps with GABA, helps to calm all that stuff down. Okay, so California poppy helps calm down the stress response. Gymnema helps your body process blood sugar more effectively. And Albizia helps protect you when you're not in control of the food, right? So those are the three herbs I just wanted to talk about today um, for helping your body adapt and heal and stay on track during the holiday season, okay? Now, speaking of Santa's big fat butt, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back over to the, the table and figure out what kind of winners we got and who's gonna be happy. Gentlemen and ladies. All right, guys, thanks for interacting with us today. Great questions in the chat, honestly. Um, so today we have four winners each on each platform, beginning with Instagram, we have Queen underscore Katie underscore Elena Edwards. And then we have Bella Fit 123 2020, 427 Nan, and Key Ixton 2. Congratulations, guys. What about on Facebook? Yeah, so on Facebook, we have Amy S. Peterson Marshall, Tammy Finmore, Valerie Fox, and Kelly Joe Christensen. Congratulations. Awesome. And to finish it up, on ADP, we have Connor O'Hara, Lisa Mansk, Catherine, and Hayden D. Congrats, everyone. Make sure you email the giveaways at thewellnessway.com. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to jump into our last 10%. All right. We are back. Thank you. I'm just going to do a little quick last 10 percent here dr jason's last 10 percent, not dr patrick's um but grace <laughs> uh sorry i start thinking about someone i know named grace um give yourself grace you're not i'm gonna do the voice uh you're not perfect Nobody on this planet ever was. Nobody's going to be. Holidays are hard. Clearly. <laughs> um, but you're going to struggle. You're going to have hard times. Lean on the support when you need it, right? If you need this stuff, use it. If you don't need it, good. But just in case, make sure you don't cause yourself massive amount of health issues because of silly stuff. Okay, that's all I want to say, because I can't clearly talk. So uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for joining us on A Different Perspective Day. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website, a Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.